have you ever had a weird dream and just wish somebody could tell you if it meant anything and if so what? Well, Joseph had the gift of interpreting dreams, at least in this context, and we're talking about that today from Genesis chapter 40. Hey guys, and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk, and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. And by the way, if you appreciate this content at some point, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We would really love to have you as part of our family. Okay guys, so dreams are a controversial subject in the Christian world as well as the world at large. And psychology tells us that dreams are simply the brain's way, this is the general consensus in psychology, dreams are the brain's way of just working through problems. And I tend to agree with that as a rule. In general, I think that dreams are just our brains randomly working through problems and you know, they can be anything and they don't necessarily mean anything other than that they are telling of what we think of certain situations. Um, I think psychologically dreams tell us a lot about what we really think, what our, our true heart's opinion is of various things. So I do think dreams are worth paying attention to, um, but I don't think they really mean anything as a rule. Some people in the Christian world, in particular, think that dreams always mean something and always have a meaning. It's just that we don't always understand it. I disagree with that biblically. I think that the example is that dreams are a way that God occasionally communicates to people, sometimes his own people and sometimes lost people. But I think that you have to be very careful with trying to interpret or read too much into dreams. There are times that are recorded in Scripture where God does speak through the dreams. Um, but we've got to be really careful because the examples in Scripture are specific moments in time that God wanted to speak to a specific person with a specific reason. And those are recorded in Scripture. And I don't think that we can have confidence in any interpretation of a dream in the modern day because we can't go to Scripture to verify it. So that's a quick nutshell on dreams. All right, now that little discussion over, let's jump into the text for today. So chapter 40 of Genesis, verse 1. And verses 1 through 8 is what we're covering today. It's really a setup for next week, but I felt like it would be too much to include this in next week's video. So let's move on in verse 1. Then it came about after these things. So again, Joseph had been elevated to a point of a, a position of prominence once again. Uh, by the way, if you didn't catch it, catch uh, 39... Um, the beginning of chapter 39, so that you'll understand where we're at in our story. Then it came about after these things that the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt, remember this was the king's prison where his personal, anyone the king personally sent to prison, this is where they went. So this is probably a little bit less supermax, a little more political. Uh, but anyway, uh, the baker for the king... Okay, anyway, let me start it over again. Then it came about after these things that the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. So after Joseph was put in, this is how God works things out. It, it doesn't always make sense. In fact, it usually doesn't make sense in the moment. And God has his own reasons and timing for the things that he does. So after Joseph was put in, that's when these two guys get put into prison. Pharaoh was furious with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard in the jail, the same place where Joseph was in prison, in case there was any doubt. Now, we don't have recorded here, and I don't think it records anywhere else. This is just off the top of my head. I don't think it ever tells us why he was angry with them, just that he was. Why? Because that's not the point. The point is that God was doing something here with Joseph in particular and ultimately with the nation of Israel. That's part of the reason we don't know why these two offended the king. 
The captain and the bodyguard put Joseph in charge of them, as it had already basically said, and he took care of them, and they were in confinement for some time. So again, it's been a minute. Then the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt, who were confined in jail, both had a dream the same night. Each man with his own dream, and each dream with its own interpretation. So we see two different uh, paths here. When Joseph came to them in the morning and observed them, so he was doing his job, he was checking in on them, behold, they were dejected. Now, again, it, it might seem like, well, they're in prison. Of course they're dejected. Well, one, I think this was like a deep depression kind of dejected. But two, I'm guessing. I don't know. This is purely opinion, purely guessing. But I'm guessing this was probably a more posh prison since this was the political type prison. So, I mean, yeah, stinks that you're in prison, but it's not like it was a supermax. You know, you're not in there with the common criminals. Um, so it, it was odd to him that they would be so dejected. He asked Pharaoh's officials who were with him in confinement in his master's house, why are your faces so sad today? So again, it's been a period of time. They weren't all dejected, and now overnight, they're dejected, both of them, separately. So Joseph says, why are your faces so sad today? They said, then they said to him, we have had a dream and there is no one to interpret it. So they've already driven themselves nuts asking everyone that was around them, or they're just making the assumption nobody can make sense out of this. I'm not entirely sure which one. I think it's the first. I think they've already asked whoever is immediately around them and nobody can help them. At the very least, they probably asked each other, dude, I had a bad dream. Oh, me too. Tell me about yours. Dude, that's messed up. I don't know what that means. Tell me about yours. Dude, that's messed up. I, like, that's how I picture it. I don't know. Um, or they're just making the assumption no one can interpret it. But it said, there is no one to interpret it. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Notice, Joseph didn't say... I'm here to interpret your dream. No, the emphasis was on God. It's just like David when he fought Goliath, right? The Aaron paraphrase, are you going to let that guy curse God? Don't you care about God's name? Well, here we go with Joseph doing something very similar. Uh, and if you don't know that story, that's okay. We'll get there later. Um, but his, his statement, do not interpretations belong to God? complete faith and dependence on God. Then he says, tell it to me, please, because he recognizes he is the ambassador for God there, right? He understands at some level, I'm sure not fully, but he understands at some level that God has put him there for that very reason. Just like the story of Esther. If you don't know that story, it's okay. But one of the famous quotes from that book, well, I'm going to paraphrase it from that book, is for such a time as this. How do you know that God hasn't put you in this exact position, in this exact circumstance for such a time as this? And the truth is God does do that to and with us. Joseph is fulfilling his calling here. He has chosen to grow where he's planted instead of freaking out about not being where he thinks he should be. And that's a challenging thing for someone in ministry to have to face up to, but it's also a challenging thing for any of us to have to face up to. So guys, that is it for today. I hope you can't hear the dog barking in the background, but that's it for today. I'm going to wrap it up because that's the end of our section here anyway. Um, as always, if you appreciate this content and this ministry, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We'd love to have you as part of our family. And if you want to support this ministry, we love you and we thank you. The two best ways to do that, number one, hit that share button, share this video on all your social media platforms. And then if you want to support us financially, there is a link down in the description. Please do so if you feel so led. Even a dollar or two a month consistently adds up and is greatly appreciated and has a major impact in the kingdom. Guys, thank you very much and God bless.